This is a personal reading with Kendra, Divine Purpose Mentor. If you guys want to book your own personal reading, I have linked all of my different prices for however amount of time that you want to do your reading for. Just go ahead and put in the description of the PayPal what your questions are or areas of focus and you will receive a recording of your reading within 24 to 48 hours. And now let's get on to this personal reading. So first off, looking at this relationship that you have currently. What I'm getting with this relationship is that it's brought a level of healing to you. I don't know if you have dated rougher guys in the past or what it is, but what I'm seeing is that the reason why you feel angry is because when you started out in this relationship, you saw him as, mm, let's say, more of, whether it be like more manly, more accomplished, because what's coming up over his face card is the magician. But really, underneath that magician is the Page of Wands. So the Page of Wands is a very young energy. It's not experienced, and it is fiery in nature. And this might have been fun in the beginning, because you're showing up as the King of Wands. And I thought it was interesting, because you asked about um, whether he is ever going to be masculine enough for you. And the thing is, is because he, just by nature, is this this younger energy, and the page can be masculine or feminine, um, and I get more of an androgynous um, vibe from him. I feel that his family has pressured him and that he doesn't really know himself. When you asked if his family will ever respect you, um, I got not unless you become the Queen of Pentacles. They want their child with somebody that is financially su successful and stable. And that's not to say that you're not. It's just they're literally asking for you to be something that you're not. And I don't know um, what it is that they're necessarily judging you for. It's more so that they feel beneath you, if that makes sense. They don't feel, they might show it in a way like you're not good enough for their son. But what's underneath that is that they don't feel, like I just keep getting this energy of like, no, it's not, it's not right. But looking at your guys' energy, it's a mismatch. It definitely is. Um... But I am getting, if you want me to go into what I see coming, if you take this relationship for what it was, and that is healing, it's allowing for you to see the parts of yourself that you've cut off. It's allowing for you to understand that when you take that masculine approach to the world because we have been living in a masculine-driven society, it makes you a fool. It makes you fall in love with people that are tricking, tricking you into believing certain things because you're not showing up in your feminine form. You're showing up in the masculine form. The masculine, the masculine form that's overcompensating. So it's not like the balanced side of your masculinity. It's like the imbalanced side of your masculinity that's very forceful. And... What, um, okay, so I also saw that there is going to be, say you were to end this relationship and you were to work on yourself because healing is coming to you right now. And this is asking for you to take steps in order to, you know, do your own healing and speak from the heart. And <clears throat> this if you do your work and you allow for this relationship to go, 
I do see two more potential partners coming in. One is going to be a Knight of Cups. And the relationship with the Knight of Cups is a beautiful one. It actually allows for you to remember your femininity. It allows for you to find strength in your femininity and put down your swords. And then this allows for you to emerge and flourish from this relationship at the ending of it as the star. And then I see that your divine counterpart comes in after that relationship. Now, I know having a reading like this and looking um, too much in the future can distract us and take us out of the present moment. And then we tend to not value the, the relationships that come in between. But this relationship is just as important as the divine counterpart. Because it takes these initiations or these lessons in order for us to get to that. Yeah, otherwise, we're not a vibrational match. Because you meeting your divine counterpart as the king of wands is not going to be a vibrational match to you um, being in relationship with your divine counterpart who is the king of swords. And the swords is all about... Because you and your balanced form are the queen of swords that is a woman that knows exactly who she is knows how to speak her truth knows how to speak from the heart without having a sharp tongue um knows exactly what she wants and how to get it um without hurting anyone because she is she has the ability to use her sword to protect her but she also knows when to put it down and just use her words and you also, I found it interesting, your archetype is the same archetype as me, except for a different tone. So you have the gift of prophecy because you're a skywalker. You're the red rhythmic skywalker. And that's the tone of six and the note of F. So yes, we vibrate in different ways in our soul song. And this will probably not make sense to you now, but allow it to just plant seeds that will awaken your consciousness along the way. And even if this doesn't make sense, it's still, there's a part of you that I'm speaking to that remembers. So being at, like you asked about the restaurant, I, I'm not getting anything long-term. Um, I am seeing that you're you're being called and drawn to a reading because your gifts of prophecy are asking for you to tune into it. But without doing this healing work, you're always going to be driven by your triggers. And when we're driven by our triggers, we can't see the path clearly. Um, because intuition comes in the form of, I'm just giving you information. I'm just giving you information. When something comes through like, oh my God, don't do that, that's a trigger. So we need to heal those triggers in order for us to know if it's divine guidance or not, or if it's coming through in, in a lot of emotions. Intuition doesn't come through emotionally. It's only when it gets stuck on our wounds that it becomes emotional. So as far as this relationship goes that you're currently in, I know this is probably not going to be something that you want to hear, but it has ran its course. Um, but I'm not saying that you need to, I'm, I'm hearing do it that the way you've done it before, where it was like painful. Um, I'm seeing that he could be a great friend. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm getting that if you hold on to it any longer, there's something imbalanced with his, his, hmm, how do I put this? Basically, what you're feeling that's making you angry is because he steps out of his masculine energy because you hold a more dominant masculine energy. And if you think about energy as in two magnets, 
we have the feminine and the masculine. And if you're the feminine embodiment, but you're taking the masculine form and your frequency is vibing higher than his, the only thing that he can do is cower to you and be in balance or take the feminine form. And this is going to make you as the feminine embodiment feel unsafe because we are in partnerships with the masculine embodiment um, and when the feminine feels unsafe with her divine counterpart then or her counterpart I should say then she's going to to get angry that's just human nature it's survival um, and so it's about when you're noticing things like that taking a step out of that masculine fiery nature and going into what's more receptive how can you make yourself feel safer how can you allow yourself to be a chalice and that is being filled um if you think about if you think about the masculine and feminine energy i always think about the rose in the glass from beauty and the beast and the glass that contains the rose is the masculine energy and the rose inside that can blossom, bloom, and flourish being contained by that beautiful glass. It's able, you know, the rose is the feminine energy. Or if you thought about pouring water or something into a glass, whatever you're putting into the glass would be the masculine energy. And the glass itself flipped up, you know, as the chalice would be the feminine energy. So it's just about thinking about how can I be receptive? How can I be softer? How can I breathe this in? How can I allow for that masculine energy to penetrate me? And not, I don't mean sexually, I mean like allow for you to breathe it in. If you don't feel safe though, then of course it's going to be imbalanced and, and the natural response to that for you personally is to flip into the king of wands. And yeah, so, I mean, if we're just speaking about vibrations and frequency, this is not a match for you to be with ro in a romantic partnership. So, you're being given an opportunity to, to heal, and the universe is calling you to become sound, healthy, and whole again. So, trust that your healing is in process and that the opportunities for further healing are on their way to you now. But you don't need to be so focused in how it's going to happen. Remember that the how is the universe's job, and you just need to take steps in, in to help assist and aid in your healing process and be open to new opportunities that come your way. Even if it seems out of the ordinary, all of the powers of the universe are working with you to get to, you to a state of well-being. So as far as the relationship goes, you're getting speak from the heart. You need to communicate your personal truth to someone. And imagine that your heart is a separate being that lives inside of you. What does your heart feel like? What does your heart feel appreciated and loved? Or does your heart feel ignored and undervalued? Begin by giving your heart these questions and start to feel your heart instead of just going with your mental mind and trying to figure it out that way instead feel into your heart allow your heart to speak to you do you need to do something differently and if you could have one wish what would it be just continue to like ask your heart what it needs to say and then allow yourself to speak from that core inside of yourself to wh whoever you feel that you need to have this conversation with understand that anger is a cover emotion so what's underneath that anger normally it's feeling unsafe or sadness that you don't want to feel so tuning into that will allow you to have awareness of what the actual problem is i'm seeing that if you do this 
then a dramatic improvement in multiple areas of your life is in store for you. But we often get very frustrated because we feel that we can only improve one aspect of our lives at a time. And I'm seeing that you feel maybe if you end this relationship that things will go badly. But what I'm seeing is that the universe is asking for you to make this choice. And it is bringing a tower moment for you if you don't make this choice and you force the universe to make it for you. And this isn't to punish you. This is just saying that this door is shut. You need to walk through a different door. And if you don't walk through that door, the universe will push you through it with a tornado or an earthquake or whatever the case may be. So it's way better to just allow yourself to go with the flow of the universe instead of trying to fight against it. If you use this momentum, then you're going to be going downstream instead of trying to paddle upstream. And the universe has your back, but you have to have that courage to take one foot or take one step in front of the other and follow this. And also I'm getting that you don't need drama in order to make an ending. And there's ways to come up with um, a healthy, like a healthy living arrangement, even if you guys aren't together. There's a way for, you know, try to fit, try to find win-win scenarios. When it's your decision and his decision, or, or, you know, what he wants and what you want, and they're conflicting, Try to find a third option that works for both of you, where you're not sacrificing, but, you know, you're really finding something that ultimately works for both of you. Um, This is going to be the healthiest transition until, because I am seeing that pentacles are coming for you, but because you're holding yourself in this stuck energy, and you're only, you're looking at, at, um, Financial abundance as if somebody has to give it to you, like through working or, you know, you're not thinking about what your soul's purpose is. You're not thinking about what lights you up inside. Um, You're not thinking about, you know, what gifts do you have to give to the world? And those, the answers to those questions are going to help direct you into doing something that's in alignment with your soul's purpose. And I feel like when you get on this, when you get on with your soul's purpose, that, of like, at first you'll do it part-time while you're still working at the restaurant or whatever it is. And then you'll go to, that becomes your primary source of income. And I see, like, multiple streams of income. And I don't know what that's going to be for you personally, because right now your higher self is not even in the same room. It's imperative that you walk in any other direction so that you start to go downstream because even a clairvoyant can't see anything when you are going in opposition to your higher self. And all of the questions that you've been asking, the universe has been trying to give you the answers. Understand that you have the gift of prophecy and I'm getting that that you've never really allowed yourself to tune into this because I'm seeing that even when you've known, people haven't taken you seriously. And so I'm not asking you to stop or start, you know, talking to people about what you're seeing, but more so it's so imperative that you do this healing so that when you're speaking It's coming through a clear channel that you empty out your cup and then refill it. Also, you know, developing um, a connection with God of your understanding. And I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about your spiritual connection, the God inside of you that creates every cell in your body. You know, that calling in this higher power so that you can feel the divine guidance that's all around you, but you just, it's like tuning your radio to a certain radio station 
and you're just been on the wrong channel. And so from that channel, you can't hear anything. And so this is just asking for you to start tuning your dial to a different station. And as you do, you will start to hear things more and more clearly. But it's important that you get to um, a zero point, like a centered, um, balanced place before you start channeling any messages. Because I'm being, I'm seeing that you are being inhibited by negative thoughts about yourself. And so when you're inhibited by negative thoughts, you're unable to be yourself without reserve because you're afraid of your own disapproval. And that's why you would attract somebody that has parents that don't approve of you and don't respect you. Remember that the universe only treats us how we teach people to treat us. So when we are feeling a lack of self-worth and a lack of respect for ourselves, we manifest experiences and partnerships and relationships with people that are going to mirror that same exact frequency to us so that we can see it. And then we don't have to repeat these lessons. But unfortunately, sometimes we just start to think that they are confirming the the self-criticism that we've already felt. And then we just make that our truth. And so this is really asking, you know, you to stop hurting yourself. That you are laboring under the misconception that you are not good enough. And you've been punishing yourself for in, in thinking that if you punish yourself enough, you'll be good enough. And that voice is hurting you. And it's trying to keep you good in whatever that means to you. Do you want to be good or do you want to be authentically you? And whose voice is that that is trying to keep you good? It's trying to keep you good so that you'll be loved. It's trying to help you. But by trying to help you, it's hurting you instead. Now it's time to have compassion for yourself, forgiveness, and patience. It's time to find approval for every aspect of yourself. And this isn't self selfish or self-centered. It's imperative to develop a level of self-love with every aspect of yourself, even the things that you judge as unlovable. And it's not to, you know, um, allow for us to keep these habits and, and character flaws that are created from our wounds, but more so to allow space for those wounds to heal so that they don't have to be in that defensive um, protector energies. You're being asked to face your fears. And when you face your fears, you're going to have all of the security that you could have ever dreamed of. It's time for you to send yourself the message that you care too much about you to deny you the feeling of safety. Remember earlier I said, what would make you feel safer? If you just live by this mantra every time you feel angry, this will allow for you to soften by giving yourself whatever it is that you need, whether it be running a hot bath or wrapping yourself up in a blanket. I mean, for me personally, I get angry as well when I don't feel safe. And I noticed that when I would travel, I would always be so excited to travel. But then because I didn't feel safe in hotels, I didn't like that people could just come in at any time to like clean your room and that the bed sheets are always so scratchy. And so when I asked myself what what could I do that would make me feel safer? It was bring my soft blanket with me from home so that I always know that I have my blanket that I can wrap myself up in and I don't care that that makes me sound like a baby. It makes me feel safe and that's all that matters. And this allowed for me to soften around the whole entire experience of being in hotels and not feeling safe and all of that. And it great it allowed for me to get to this place where even when somebody that I really looked up to 
saw that I had a blankie in my suitcase and I wrapped it around me and she started to make fun of me. It didn't hurt my feelings because like I, I'd already like healed that and I wasn't carrying it around because I'm a baby. I'm carrying it around because I love myself and that's not something that anybody can make me feel insecure about. And so the universe is asking for you to take these steps in finding this love for yourself. And that should be your, your first priority, you know, finding that connection with your higher power and falling deeply in love with yourself. Because any relationship that you attract before this process, it's going to be imbalanced and it's going to be karmic and it's going to be painful because you have lessons to learn. And until you learn these lessons, you will attract partners that are going to make you feel unworthy. And their parents are not going to respect you. And it's always going to feel like this constant struggle. Because you're coming and you're meeting and you're coming together from an imbalanced place, an unhealed place. And... Both parties are overcompensating and pretending, as we saw earlier. The magician pretending, when really he's covering up that he's just the page of wands. He's just this little boy. And, you know, you've overcompensated by becoming this king of wands. And so it doesn't even matter how old you guys are. This overcompensation has put you guys, you know, worlds apart. So in this, this card, this meaning, it, um, it says, you know, what do you, what can you do to make yourself feel safer? And you deserve to experience an emotional state free of loss, fear, danger, and risk. What do you need in order to feel more secure? What do you need in order to feel safer? Do those things for yourself now. They may be things as big as ending a relationship. It literally says that in the card meaning. Or they may be things as small as taking a bubble bath. I think I said that earlier. It is not a crime to soothe yourself. It is self-loving and it is living in a, it is not self-loving to live in a perpetual state of fear. So don't put off for tomorrow, you know, what you need to do today in order to make yourself feel safer, a state of calm and peaceful surrender. Um, I would take a salt bath with pink Himalayan salt or Epsom salt every time you start to feel wound up and allow yourself to just be in that bathtub Put your head underneath the water and float until all of your thoughts quiet. Until you can just hear the buzzing of the water. And just focus on your breath. Focus on breathing techniques. Anytime that you get overwhelmed, breathe in the mouth, out the nose ten times to take you to a calm, peaceful alpha brainwave state. And... Go in the direction of looking at the patterns that are coming up that this relationship is mirroring to you, all of the things that it's brought up to you, for you. And instead of just ending this relationship and jumping to the next one, because you're just going to repeat the same patterns because you haven't healed it, instead write all of the things down that it's brought up for you, not Passing the blame, but looking at the patterns. You know, when was the first time I felt this feeling? When was the last time I felt this feeling? And really look, where did these patterns come from? And you'll start to see that these patterns came from childhood. And if you start to look at trauma as an upset that was unresolved, there's lots of, we all experience so much trauma. And when we, I'm transmuting a lot of energy with that but um when we don't complete these trauma cycles it stays stuck in our body 
and then we have these physical reactions where we don't understand why we're acting a certain way or we manifest all of these things that were tucked in our, our subconscious that were not what we wanted. And so by allowing ourselves to go back and complete those trauma cycles, by not it's not that you have to relive what's happened in the past. The purpose and the point is to identify the emotions, knowing that every time that we go back and revisit the past, that we're actually re-traumatizing our brain. So it's not good for us to relive what has happened. More so, it's to tap into what emotion it made you feel and heal that emotion. Allow that emotion to gently rebalance. And... Um, what else? Um, and know that crying is your body's most natural way to complete a trauma cycle. So even interrupting it to wipe a tear away or to judge it interrupts the trauma cycle and it gets stuck in our bodies. And that's when we start to have physical manifestations of illnesses. So I hope you enjoyed this reading and let me know if you have any questions. I hope this answered your questions and have a good night.